All right. The moment you've all been waiting for. We've talked all week about rekeying locks. We even talked about master keying of locks. What if, however, you have a key with relatively low privilege and you want to find out the bidding cuts that might be on the key that has very high privilege? Would you believe you can do it with some basic simple tools, a few blanks, and a little bit of courage? Stay tuned. Hey everyone. So in previous videos, we talked about the fact that this lock is master keyed. We talked about the fact that the boss has this key right here, this nice Primus key. It does a lot all around this whole facility. Joe Schmo, the, the nobody employee, right? Like, you know, Johnny Stunad, he's got this key. All his key does is operate this interior lock and nothing more. It's just so, you know, if he's got to go use uh, the Pichadun or something, he can do that, lock the door, unlock it again, but his key can't do anything else. This attack, the master key privilege escalation attack, all it involves is a little bit of measurement, some key blanks, and hand filing. Now, that's the slow way to do it. I'm not going to lie. We're going to accelerate this process with the use of a pack-a-punch and some more advanced math coming on up here. I'm sure as I do this, this is, we're going to try to go for a little speed record. I'm certain that people are going to say, wait, well, why did he do that? Why did he skip that? What, how did, I don't get it. If you don't get it, that's fine. We're just trying to do a little proof of concept and maybe I'll be fortunate enough to actually make this work. Every time something doesn't work right, I don't know, I'll take a drink. Uh, if you're curious why I'm doing things a certain way, why I'm taking certain measurements, crossing some things out, well, we cover that in much greater detail, both in our Red Team Alliance classes, and frankly, I cover this in an old talk. It's online. It's on this channel. Like, my little, uh, my name is right there. Like, click that, and then click videos, and then if you search for master keying, you'll find this. It was an old talk that I gave in New York. Now, this has nothing to do with measuring the boss's master key. That key is not in the picture. We're not even going to take a photograph of it. If you have a photograph of the key, you can decode it a different way. I gave a talk about that, too, at John Strand and the Black Hills uh, Wild West Hackenfest. So, all we know is this is our key. This is, you know, we are the criminal who wants to make a master key, but we don't have squat. We just have a change key. Start by measuring the change key. And if you remember from the last episode, this was 1, 5, 8, 2, 3, 2. We're not going to go through the whole Jimmy Jam, right? So we got, oh, well, why not? Let's do it. So we got 2, we got a 3, and we got a 2. Okay, 1, 5, 8, 2, 3, 2. Let's mark that down. I'm going to mark a C in certain positions, and that C is just going to represent change key. So it was 1, Five, eight, and that two three two is really just going to be two three because technically you know the change key is out here at a two but we said this is only a five pin lock there are a few things you can infer about systems like this first of all I'm gonna start crossing out certain values why am I crossing out these values well because it doesn't matter. We got nothing over here. Doesn't matter right now. I can just tell you there's no way in a system like this that certain values could ever be in play for the master key of this lock. Why aren't they in play? Again, watch my previous talk or take one of our classes. It turns out they're just invalid. They're invalid bidding depths, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to, to prepare exploratory key number one. Ultimately, we're going to run through a series of five exploratory keys in this attack. But hopefully, we can knock through this really fast. Exploratory key number one, we are going to use it to explore this range right here. Well, how do you explore just one chamber at a time? Like, it's not like cracking a password in the movies where you can spin random numbers and, like, hold these positions. Well, well you kind of can. We know certain good depths in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th position. 
We know they work. We don't know that they're master depths. They probably aren't. But we know they're good depths. We can then populate the key with known good depths in the second, third, and fourth, fifth position, and then try every possible depth over here in the first position. Let's give that a dance. Now, we've cut the second, third, fourth, and fifth position. We haven't touched the first position, but should we? Well, we don't care about zero, one, two. We're going to start at three on that first position. First position, depth of three. Okay. Let's give it a try. Does it chooch? No. Doesn't work at all. So we're going to mark an X or a slash even on three. Okay. Three doesn't work. What's the next position? Is it four? No, it's not. Not always guaranteed when you don't have a competent locksmith, but if you have a competent locksmith in the Schlage system, you never go by odd intervals. Everything in Schlage is intervals of two or multiples of two. So this is a one, right? Three could have been valid, but it didn't work. Four could not be valid. Five could be. Six could not. Eight could not. What about here? We got a five. We got an odd number. That means two could not work, zero could not work, six could not work, eight could not work. Here we've got an even, however. Six could be valid, five could not, three could not, one could not. So you can see how valid, valid, invalid, invalid, invalid. We can start seriously chopping down against our potential values. There's a lot of situation here that we can be really efficient. So right now, we care about just testing a five in that first chamber. First chamber, depth set to five. All right, does it chooch? No, it does not. All right, five is a no. Let's try the seven. Here we go. There's a seven. Does it work? Hey, that is awesome news that we can use. We have found a new depth that was not our original depth. We found what is probably a master depth. If the key we had originally was the lowest rung on the totem pole, any other valid depths that we stumble across are probably higher escalated privilege than what we had. Now, if we wanted to be very diligent, because again, we, you know, we, we've got this key, might as well try. Let's go ahead and check the nine because we can flush out the last of this. How you doing? Nine? Nine is not fine. All right. That tells us that nine isn't anything. So it's time to check the second position. And you can see because we eliminated so many possibilities, it is very likely that we were trip over this in just a few attempts. And these keys, right, we're just using blank keys. The cost of this attack is monstrously cheap and easy and low. Let's get this loaded up in the Pack-a-Punch. And boy, how much do we miss A1. The company who makes this, they don't exist anymore. It's a shame. The fellow passed away. His son uh, is not continuing this part of the business as far as we know. So, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes the berries. All right. This first chamber, our original depth was what? First position was a one. Let's populate that in. The second position, let's not touch for a second right now. We're not getting there. Let's talk about the third. We know we have an eight. The fourth position, 
we had a good depth of two. In the fifth position, we had a good depth of three. So click over and three. So what are we going to do in that second position? We're going to try one, three, seven, and nine. Where are we? This third position, this cut at eight, I will tell you, we're really close to what's known as max, maximum adjacent cut specification. Seven is, uh, max of seven is valid in Schlage systems. So we're going to give this a dance. It might be unhappy going in and out. Let's take a look at this key before we insert it. We've just got enough of that of that bidding cut. It's just enough of a shallow to still be there. So I'll, I'll consider this valid. <laughs> the lock might not uh, consider it too valid. It definitely doesn't want to turn. We'll give it an extra couple dances in and out. No. We're going to call that one not working. So let's take our second position and switch it to a three. Now, of course, if you are a, a person of limited means, you could be hand filing this whole time. That would work. But it is goddamn nice to have a pack a punch, isn't it? All right, second position, cut to a three. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, bang, excellent. Let's get ourselves another happy face in here. Yeet, yeet. Okay, second position, we like three as that value of a cut. This key. That key's now burnt. But you notice, we're really, uh, we're really breaking the bank with this attack, right? We're, we're using blank keys, which no one could ever possibly get. They're, they're impossibly expensive, aren't they? Okay. Time to test that third chamber. Let's see what's going on there. Well, if we're going to test the third chamber, we're going to populate our, our third exploratory key with a one which we know is good, a five, which we know is good, and then we're going to test zero, we're going to test two, four, and six. Not too many positions to actually have to go through. All right, let's make this happen. First position, we're putting in a one. Second position, we're putting in a five. Third position, we're not doing much right now. We could, technically, if you want to start priming it, we could put in at zero, because zero is a valid cut. All these cuts in Slay, right, you think zero might not exist. It is an actual cut. It barely makes a mark on the key, but some tricky locksmiths will include zero in a big enough system. All right, fourth position, what are we putting in? We're putting in a two depth. Fifth position. What are we putting in? We're putting in a three. All right. Let's try it out. With that super teeny teeny, if you'd focus, you fuck. There we go. There is barely, barely a nip in that zero cut right there. But it is, it is a valid cut, so let's see what happens. Bull and shit is what happens. All right. Zero is nothing. All right, let's get a number two cut in that third position. So third position, we're trying a two cut. Here we go. Is that valid? Not at all. Okay, let's try a four cut. give it a tease, give it a bounce. No, not happening. All right, last possibility. Otherwise, you might have a chamber that's simply not mastered. That does happen from time to time. Third position, let's give it a six cut. And making these multiple little repeated nips on the same shot on the key 
it's not great. It's not great for accuracy. So that's why sometimes there's a little stickiness, but you saw it. Once it's stuck once, there we go. We are happy. Excellent. That is a good thing. Number six. This guy with his tongue out of his side. He's very happy. He's kind of got an evil glare right there. Salute to you. More than halfway home. Two more chambers to go. Let's prepare our fourth exploratory key. All right. Lock it in. Looking good. First position. What's our first known good depth? It's a one. What's our second known good depth? It's a five. Now, people sometimes ask me, why wouldn't you start using master keys at depth as you go? I get a little leery about that. I say, look, I know these, these known good depth. I measured them from my key. I'm the most positive I could be about those depths. The depths I've been discovering, you notice I had to kind of fiddle with one and file it and all that other hoo-ha. They are not necessarily as accurate as the ones I hand measured with a key that I knew was good. All right, fourth position we're about to explore. Let's not get too crazy on that one. Let's get to the fifth position where we know we need a three. All right, and in that fourth position, we're going to explore the zero. We're going to explore the four. We're going to explore a six and an eight. Okay, fourth position. Let's put it on the zero. Barely any nip off of that key, but let's see. Oof, there's that, there's that zero way up there next to the eight. Zero next to the eight honestly violates max. And you can, you can kind of see that right here. There's barely any zero left like that. The eight has violated so hard into there. And if we're looking at this carefully, especially with a nipper, not a key, mach key machine and a cutter wheel, there is the possibility of jamming a key into a lock. Again, what, why am I cleaning this up with a hand file? I'm using the nipper. Well, we talk about this in class. The last thing you want to do is have a key that is partially your key and partially the boss's master key in some depths, potentially, and getting it stuck in the lock, which can happen. So thankfully, this does, does come out willingly, but it's, it's a little dangerous, I'm not going to lie. All right. Well, zero wasn't the cut. We're going to move all the way down to four. Let's see what happens if we put a four in the fourth position. All right, fourth position. We're going to skip all the way down to four. Got a nice clean cut. Let's see what happens. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Excellent. We know this works. Now, notice there are more positions that we haven't checked yet. During this first chamber, did we hit any additional depths other than our depth and the master depth? No, we didn't. Did we in the second chamber? No. Did we in the third chamber? No. Once we've only found two depths per chamber, screw these guys. I'm not going to cross them off. I'm going to leave my boxes available and open, but I'm not going to waste time on that right now. I am interested in just trying out the fifth chamber. Maybe we can blast through this and be done really quickly. All right. Let's get our fifth key loaded up. First position is a one. Second position is a five. Third position is an eight. Fourth position is a two. And the fifth position, we are about to explore a one, a five, a seven, and a nine. Four possibilities. 
Let's see how lucky we can get. All right, we said the fifth position could be maybe a one. Do we like the one? We don't. All right, cross it off. Jumping all the way down to five. Let's see if that works. Fifth position, down to a five. Does that work? Ooh, hello. We're turning, we're turning on five. Now, you can call me crazy. Why am I turning one way and not the other? This is, this is hands down one of the least expected results we have had. We're gonna put a question mark on five. All right, let's try to finish out our run. Fifth position, we're gonna mark it down at a seven. Let's see what happens now. All right, does it still turn the other way? This is, this is hands down one of the strangest. Again, when you, when you repeatedly nip at keys, you get some bizarre results. We're gonna call this a confused face with a question mark, maybe? <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's, it's a whiskey o'clock. Just to be diligent, because we're getting, we're getting opens everywhere now, <laughs> let's try a depth of nine in that final position. All right, that won't do anything. Okay, that, that's an expected result. Okay, very, very good. I don't know what's happening here. If I had enough spare keys, well, I mean, I, fuck, of course I got fucking spare keys. I, I, I got to know what, what is going on with this weird result on five. But let's say we're not concerned about that. Let's say the unscrupulous employee, what they care about now is that they think they may have discovered a master depth on all these chambers. Where are our smiley faces? We have a seven, we have a three, we have a six, we have a four, <laughs> we, we're not sure over here, but we think we've got a seven. And if you happen to remember, as I just dug this up, that is in fact the bitting of the primus key that we have found. If we try to cut a clean one of that, let's see what happens. So we want seven, three, six, four, seven. Seven, second position, depth of three, three, Six, four, seven. And just to be sure, we are not an idiot. Seven, three, six, four, seven. This should work. Am I about to be proven completely foolish? Oh, thank God. Thank God I'm not. Excellent. But now, the whole point, if you recall, from the very beginning of this exercise, 
that Schlage Primus key. That is the master key of this system, right? And if there were other locks around in this environment, like let's say this guy right here, this lock that we just discovered being a rogue employee, we can operate that padlock. What about that really nice deadbolt that we pinned up with all those anti-pick features? Remember, Bill, lockmaking lawyer, I'm, I'm sending this to one of you. Ooh, it should it should Oh, you know why it doesn't work? Who can tell me right now? Pause the video now and put your comments below. Doesn't work because the sixth chamber isn't isn't known. So that's kind of neat. The uh, the rogue employee couldn't figure out the sixth bitting depth. Unless they remembered, you know, to take photographs of the boss's key when the boss wasn't looking. If you, if you knew that the last chamber, the sixth chamber, was a value of two, that should work our deadbolt as well. There you go. But the really neat thing, the most secure locks in the entire environment, those Primus locks, do we have the bitting depths on the top of the key? We absolutely do. We've got those keys completely squared away. But the reason I love that Primus system, the Primus key can fit and turn and operate. Even if somebody were to know your bidding or do a master key decoding attack and get your bidding, no way to actually get their key in the Primus lock itself. Now, is that completely invulnerable to the attacks of someone who has gone through maybe our Primus class or something like that? No, there are ways around it. But best bang for your buck, if you want to have a really nice lock where your master key can be backwards compatible and operate all other parts of the system. You want to be able to issue people keys that will insert in certain locks but cannot insert in other locks in the system. Again, I don't work for Allegion. I don't work for Schlage or any of these people. Uh, Drew might laugh at me. Drew, our, uh, our amazing Primus attack guy. But dollar for dollar, pound for pound, the Schlage Primus is not a bad choice in residential or commercial environments in this country if you know what you're doing, and that's why I love teaching people about this. I know this last one was a long one in the series, but this is a fun time. I really hope you dig this. I hope everyone's staying safe. I know all of us are drinking whiskey like vaccine, as uh, you know various people have said in popular songs recently. So I want you to have fun with this. I want you to keep learning. Most of all, please stay safe out there. Hey, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. As many of you know, we've been doing this giveaway thing from the Pelican Boxo prizes. The idea is, I, I don't really have a Patreon, I don't have a subscription model, I, I don't have any of those things. Uh, I got a, you know, a, a career doing other stuff out in the real world, so this YouTubery, it's just an excuse for me to do funny stuff for you people and to uh, connect once in a while. And what we like to do is reach in here and, and give something, you know what? Half you know what these are. In fact, I'm, that's a lie. 90% uh, of you know what these are. CH751 keys. Turns out, when you buy them in the size quantity that Howard and I uh, buy these suckers in, you get a lot of them. And I have a lot of them. I mean, yes, I, I throw them on various tool rings and other uh, gear bags, but there's only so many. And I have extra. So I'm going to start giving these away. If you would like your very own CH751, yeah, I know they're a dollar, but you know, you can get one for free. It's, it's, it's a whole buck less than a dollar. Down in the comments, what you do is you sound off with the word of the week. Um, the word of the week, I'm drinking some wine tonight. Syrah. There you go. If you want to earn your dollar, <laughs> learn how to spell the word Syrah, that particular varietal. Put it down in the comment. It can be by itself. It could be as part of a sentence that you can use. But I will randomly, or an internet site that I use, will randomly choose one of you. And I will get in touch and I will say, hey, you won that key that uh, goes to freaking everything on the goddamn planet. Would you like it? And if you say yes, I will get an address from you and drop this in the mail. Okay. Just one. Not, not the whole ring. Come on. I don't have the budget to give away $5 worth of keys all at one pop. What do you think this channel is? Lockpicking Lawyer? <laughs>
<laughs> just kidding. I love you, bro. Okay, man. Uh, have have at it. I'll, I'll see y'all next week or something like that. Thanks as always for watching. Stay safe out there.